How's it going? Harvested the Roma tomatoes. Here's a gala. Uh, harvested the Roma tomatoes from the top uh, wicking IBC bed today, and we've come across this. These little nodules on all over the roots here. We had the same problem in a long purple Asian eggplant in the bed next to it. Um, and what these guys are, are root knot nematodes. So here's a bit of an example of one I pulled off. Um, little nodules, they're a microscopic words, they worm, these nematodes, and they infect the roots of your plants, making these little nodules. I pulled one apart earlier, trying to find them, but couldn't, because apparently they're microscopic. So anyway, um, we've had these a fair bit. Um, they really savagely attacked the second broad ripple tomato we had planted. Um, it was a second generation in the same soil, so the soil was just fully infested with these little blighters. This is one of the sweet potatoes we harvested from the uh, wicking bed down the back. Um, it's an IBC wicking bed. And I asked on the clip if anyone had any suggestions as to why they may have split. And two were given that were feasible and make sense. One was they were left in too long and the other that they were waterlogged. However, after finding a Queensland government website, um, it turns out that it's actually root knot nematode. You can tell by the way the funky little patterns in the splitting. Um, the little bumps in the flesh here, I don't know how well that's coming up. Um, they're the start of an infestation and this, the splitting is a good example of a sustained um, attack by the nematodes. Down this end of the potato, nice and smooth, um, so that's pretty much all what it should look like. So it turns out the wicking beds weren't too moist and they weren't in too long, but they were great suggestions. Um, so you live and you learn, you learn something new. Um, one interesting thing though is this variety is obviously a lot more susceptible than the golden flesh one. This is a purple skin white flesh. I will be growing them again in the wicking beds. So it's a disease. Um, it's just something that we're going to have to look out for. During the week I treated the bed with a neem seed oil concentrate. Um, neem, just quickly, is a plant that grows in the Indian subcontinent. Uh, that's the India-Pakistan region of the world and it has a whole heap of beneficial and um, medicinal qualities that you can take advantage of. There's a link in the description box below um, to a site that has heaps of different reference materials. Um, yeah, so anyway, I treated the um, IBC at the end of last week. Uh, with a neem seed oil concentrate. Um, I used a 1 is to 100 mix, that is 100 mils of neem seed oil to 10 litres of water. Um, you can also use neem cake, and that's the husk or the shell of the neem seed. It's a byproduct of getting the oil, um, and you can dig that um, through the soil. It takes longer to break down, so it is effective for over a longer period of time. Um, Anyway, I use that to treat the nematodes. Um, neem oil has an active constituent called azadectarin, which is a hormone blocker. It affects the hormones, the reproductive hormones, the hormones that um, regulate the different stages of life in insects, and um, in this case nematodes, um, and basically kills them that way, not letting them to progress or reproduce or whatever. It doesn't harm beneficial uh, insects like bees, hoverflies, lacewings, um, ladybugs, ladybirds, things like that and it doesn't harm worms at all and is actually used to condition soils as well so I'm not too worried about it doing any damage to the environment. It's actually rather useful in treating other insects like aphids as well and grasshoppers and white cabbage butterfly caterpillars. Um, there's two different ways you can use it. You can use it as a systemic pesticide. That's where you just spray the ground, the plant takes it up and the um, insect will eat the plant and the um, poison will then act slowly that way. Or as a contact spray where you can spray it onto the insect and it will slowly absorb in and do its job. It does act slowly though, it isn't a contact killer. Um, so that's pretty much all how we've treated the bed this time around. Um, It'll be rather hard to see the results because nematodes are in the roots. Uh, we won't be able to really see the results until we pull the plants and we'll see if there's any nodules. Um, so that'll be about four to six months time. I'll do another clip and we'll have a look then. There were two other ways I contemplated um, trying to control the nematodes. One is marigolds. 
French marigolds in particular. Normal marigolds, the ornamental ones, aren't so crush hot in controlling them. Um, the reason being is French marigolds have a higher concentration of pyrethrum in the roots and the leaves and flowers, and that's what deters nematodes. So because it would only deter them, and I planted them in a wicking bed, the closed system, the nematodes would just skedaddle from that area of the bed and still have, um, and probably still attack plants. So pretty much all decided not using them, uh, the um, French marigolds. Still going to plant them out around the banana trees out the front because they're in the ground and also in the lime tree bed because there's plants in the ground there. Um, another way is molasses and at McFarlane on her site recommends using a, a spray or drenching the soil for nematodes with a spray of molasses that is two tablespoons of molasses, one teaspoon of sunlight soap or a liquid pure soap that is and um, to one litre of water and spraying that on the ground or watering can whatever to combat nematodes. Um, I considered it but then we've got ants problems in the yard and the ants, some of the ants we have make soil hydrophobic so my thinking was if I put nice sweet molasses through the wicking beds it attracts ants that make the soil hydrophobic meaning it won't suck in moisture, won't hold moisture that could cause problems down the line so I decided against that um, but in the ground that's a great way for treating them I would think um, there is a fourth way and that's using synthesized chemical pesticides or insecticides pardon me um, the problem is those warning labels on the back the warning labels on the back of those packets have warnings um, keep away from fish and birds I like birds and I like fish so I pretty much will don't want to poison our aquaponics setup or the chooks in the backyard or the native wildlife. So I'm not going to use those synthesized poisons. We'll go the natural route. So like I said, I pretty much will can't show you any results as of yet. Um, it'll have to be down the line. I'll do another clip then, I like to be honest, and um, show you what it looks like. So if anyone has any comments, suggestions, questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. If you can help or if I've misinformed anyone, feel free to let me know. Um, I enjoy learning these things, that's why I do these clips, I like to share it with other people, so feel free to let me know, um, politely. So have a great one, take it easy and catch you soon. With the wicking beds, I think we're pretty lucky. Um, there's a beautiful wren just there. Hey yeah, little fella, that's a little male wren. And he's off. <laughs>